and people are very skeptical uh, about the government after this incident. So any anything government and TEFCO say, people are not willing to believe. I mean, they have been lying to the people for so many things for so many days. So whenever the government says something is safe, people people automatically question if the government is telling them truth. So people are a little panicked last year because they didn't know what to believe. And still that condition persists. Uh, the government wanted to take care of the radiation, you know, uh, but uh, people don't know what to believe. So they often go outside of Japan and try to get the expert's opinion. Yes, I've been seeing that. I'm interviewing Kono Taro, who is a member of the Japanese Diet, a member of the Liberal Democratic Party. Um Monitoring of food, I, I have read that half the rice grown in Japan is grown in the Fukushima prefecture and the rice, much of that rice is coming in contaminated with cesium-137 and 134. I know that mushrooms grown in certain parts are ex- extremely radioactive. The tea which is being picked even south of Tokyo has cesium in it and that's only one of the many radioactive elements that escape. They're only measuring cesium. They're not measuring many of the other elements. Um, is the government really not systematically and carefully monitoring the food that people eat? What is the situation now, Kono Taro? Well, um, well, a lot of mothers with young children are really concerned. Um, the Governments are not uh, systematically monitoring the radiation in the food. I think that's correct. Uh, some municipalities or uh, prefectures, uh, the local government uh, independently uh, starting to monitor radiation. Uh, the rice, as, as you said, the rice from Fukushima uh, some of some of rice in Fukushima uh, got a high high radiation than the government standard, so the farmers are not allowed to sell. I live south of southwest of Tokyo, and uh, in my prefecture, the tea is being contaminated from the cesium. So we are we are not sure what what kind of damage caused by uh, cesium. So I think the mother with the young children really concerned what to feed them. And the fish, uh, I mean, the fish don't stay at uh, one place. So we are, we are really concerned what's happening in the sea because TEPCO dumped a lot of contaminated water into the sea at the beginning. Uh, I think there were a huge amount of radiation. And uh, we, we are worried about the influence on uh, fish. Yes. Um, do you have ch- young children, Kono? Yes, I have a nine-old son. Are you worried? And my wife's very concerned. She's very concerned. Yes, I would be yes. too, because you would know if there was radiation in the tea grown mm-hmm. in your area, there would be radiation in many of the foods grown there too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So That's right. does she want to move? Well, she's still with me. <laughs> um, I mean, she's she's concerned and she's very careful what to feed them. Yes, yes. And I I read yesterday actually, sixty three percent of the fish caught in the area around Fukushima contains cesium one three seven. But that's only again the cesium, and and we know that also cesium uh, concentrates mm-hmm. very highly in seaweed. And as we know, mm-hmm. the Japanese love their fish and their seaweed. So that's right. The thing is that what you need to know, I think, and I think you heard me say this when we were at a conference in Istanbul, that cesium is like potassium and Mm -hmm. it's concentrated very much in the brain where it can cause brain tumours, in the muscle Mm -hmm. where it can cause very nasty muscle sarcomas, in the Mm -hmm. testicles and ovaries where it can cause both cancers and damage genes in the eggs and sperm so it damages future generations. Uh, what, what, What sort of... Uh, policies is the Japanese government now setting up 
to monitor the health of the particularly the children and the women who are so sensitive um, of people living in contaminated areas is there any systematic approach to the monitoring of the health of those people Kono Taro well the government is going to monitor uh, people in Fukushima for many years to come and uh, see what kind of influence they are under but uh, at, at the beginning, uh, they didn't monitor how much uh, radiation fallout in you know many places. So uh, I don't know how how complete this uh, monitoring will be. Mm. Uh, I think the Japanese government uh, were not uh, carefully monitoring the situation right after the accident. I think they were too busy too busy with uh, handling the Fukushima. Uh, reactors. Mm. So I don't know how complete the number is going to be, but uh, they will spend a lot of money monitoring people in Fukushima for many years to come. Well, you know, they, the people can get cancer 70 years after they've eaten radioactive mm -hmm. food or been exposed. So it really is a sort of Hiroshima Nagasaki situation in slow motion, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of people are going to develop malignancies and you know they're probably babies already being born who might be deformed i haven't read any reports yet but i wouldn't be surprised if that was occurring mm -hmm. and uh, i think the government at the beginning really tried to hide the numbers and uh, tried to show the damage is very small uh the government say it is to avoid the panic but uh, i don't I mean, as long as people are supplied with the information, people don't panic. People start panicking because they realize government is hiding the numbers mm. and uh, they were not sure what the truth was. So I think the government mishandled the situation. And uh, that created a uh, big doubt about whatever the government says now. And uh, it's, it is very difficult. Uh, to do something in this circumstances. Yes, it seems like the government's paralysed. I also read the other day, Kono, that mm -hmm. the government is actually canning very radioactive fish and sending it to third world countries. Have you heard that? Um, I, I, I heard the story, yeah. They try to sell it outside. I don't know how much is true and what is the... Uh, the, what, what's really happening, I'm not sure. There were a lot of, well, there's a lot of news on the Internet, and not all of them are true. And it's very difficult yeah. to see what is the reality and what is uh, something people think is happening. But also, you're in the government. Um, surely you would be getting official reports, are you not? Well, we are we are opposition, and uh, the government are not uh, reporting everything. Uh. They are very selective. It must be very frustrating for you. <laughs> well, I mean, they they should have they should uh, you know give all the information public and yeah. uh, let let people. Judge, I think that should be the correct policy. And do do you find that the media now is more responsive to you? Do you have many interviews on the radio and television in the newspapers, Kono Taro? Yes, I have had a many interviews with television, radio, newspaper. But uh, what worries me is, you know, the people in the media are now telling me that they don't get the numbers like before. You know the when the news magazine talk about the nuclear issues, the issues sell uh, less. And uh, well, the television... Sell less. Went... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so people are, I don't know, people are forgetting or people are getting tired of, or I don't know, but people are not paying as much in, you know, attention as right after the accident. Mm. That is the sort of a consensus from the media. Whenever television uh, covers the nuclear issues, the rating is not as good as before. And so, you've got to have good ratings, right? <laughs> you mustn't educate that's people. Right, that's you've got right. to have good ratings to sell the The magazine has to sell, right. magazine has to sell. So if 
it doesn't sell well. Uh, they w- they will stop covering, and this is a big issue. This is very important issues. But uh, yeah, well. <laughs> I'm interviewing Kano Taro, who is a member of, of the Japanese Parliament and the Liberal Democratic Party. Are you worried, Kono, about future events at Fukushima as if there's another earthquake or tsunami and Building 4 could collapse with a very serious high-level radioactive waste cooling pool on the roof of that, of that particular building? Are, are you worried yes. about future events at, at those reactors? Right, um... For, for some time, I mean, the Fukushima uh, reactor number four, uh, it was, it was, it got an uh, explosion and the building was half collapsed. And uh, we were worried if there's another big earthquake and if the building collapsed with the cooling pool. Uh, I mean, that, that would have been... Uh, a catastrophe. Very damaging. Yeah, lots mm-hmm, of radiation mm-hmm. release. So are you still that's worried right, about that right. or not? Well, we, we were. And, uh, but well, not now? We, we tr- well, I mean, we, we still worried about it. But uh, I think the situation is a little getting better than right after the situation mm-hmm. last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we had uh, many strong earthquakes. Uh, right after the March 11th, mm. but uh, right now we we still have a lot of earthquakes. You had a 5.8. You had a 5.8 mm-hmm. there the other day, right underneath the reactor. That was that was January 1st, right? Yeah, that's not long ago. <laughs> mhm, mhm. Um, so now, we we are not really convinced it's all safe, but no. uh, hope situation have been getting better. Yeah. So now let's go on to Japan as a whole. I, I understand Mitsubishi and other big companies are involved very much in the construction of nuclear reactors abroad. Isn't Japan the only country that makes the reactor vessel, um, the very thick steel vessel in which the you know the reactor core is contained? Is that is Japan the only country that makes that? Um. I'm not sure. We have a Mitsubishi heavy industry, Toshiba, Hitachi, yeah. all have worked on uh, nuclear, and uh, they've been they've been purchasing the nuclear wing of Westinghouse or General Electric. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know who else who else does it outside of Japan. No, you're very heavily invested in in, in a global in the global nuclear industry mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. as your own industry. Um, talk about the closed nuclear fuel cycle, Kono Taro, and why you were so concerned and what is happening in your country with reprocessing and where it is. Would you like to talk about that? Sure. Um, we have to import all the uranium for the nuclear reactor. Mostly and, from uh, Australia. Also... Mostly from Australia. Right. Well, a lot, of, a lot from Australia. Yeah. Uh, just as we have to import a lot of oil from Middle East. Yes. So our our nuclear policy from the beginning uh, is to burn uranium, get the spent fuel, and uh, reprocess spent fuel to take the plutonium out. And we were supposed to develop fast breeder reactor, so we can increase the amount of plutonium in the fast breeder reactor, uh, so that it would supply electricity for the next 2,000 years. And we spent uh, more than 2 trillion yen uh, in the last 50 years. And uh, we were supposed to have fast breeder reactor developed uh, commercially ready by 1980s. And uh, the target has been postponed many times in 1995 I think December 1995 we had a major uh, accident in the first breeder reactor pilot plant 